What's going on, everyone? Jeremy here from The Quartering. A lot to cover today. We've got news on Pokemon Sword and Shield, some interesting developments there that I'm a little late to the game covering, but many of you have reached out asking me to cover it. I've got some news about the Witcher TV series as well as some new Twitch terms of service updates that are pretty interesting. Now, I want to start out with the Pokemon Sword and Shield situation. Now, fans of the franchise are greatly upset about several things in the new Sword and Shield game, uh, and we're going to discuss them. But most importantly, I want to take a look at, one, how the fans of the game have, from what I can see, clearly debunked Game Freak's assertion that the game's models or Pokemon had to be redesigned from scratch, as well as the overall games journalism reaction to player feedback. We've seen often when we look at websites like Kotaku or Polygon, they use this terminology of the entitled gamer all the time. And I get it that at some point as a developer, you have to say no. At some point as a developer, when you're developing a video game, you can't just develop it endlessly uh, and, and some things get cut out. But in the case of Pokemon Sword and Shield, they changed the game in a way that uh, is hard to understand. And before we get into that, I want to give a huge shout out to this video's sponsor, NordVPN. Now you know that I've had some issues while streaming and many other concerns when it comes to data security and NordVPN has stepped up and I've been using their product for several months now and I've been super satisfied. I think in today's internet environment, we absolutely should be strongly considering using VPNs and NordVPN has over 5,200 servers in 60 countries, no data logging. NordVPN has an extension for the Chrome browser, which is lightweight, user-friendly, and from the first click secures your browsing in seconds. They have super fast servers, 24 seven support, and up to six simultaneous connections which means you can connect all of your devices, phone, laptop, and desktop. You can keep access to your favorite websites and entertainment content and forget about any censorship or bandwidth limits. NordVPN is the perfect solution to the incoming Article 13, and it even works in China. A VPN is something I strongly recommend to all of my viewers, so head on over to nordvpn.org slash thequartering and use promo code thequartering to save up to 75% on a three-year plan plus one month free. That's nordvpn.org slash the quartering. Head over there now. Let's get on with the video. So let's get into some of these articles. So essentially, there's been um, the Game Freak coming out and saying, look, we're not going to do the national decks anymore. You're not going to be able to not only um, have every Pokemon in the game, but you cannot import Pokemon that are not in the existing game. Um, so this is the first time you haven't been able to do that. So essentially, historically, if I understand it correctly, Pokemon has uh, always had this game series, which is what, almost 20 years old at this point, has always had a way to import other Pokemon, which may not be in the game. Now, this feature, I think, is fair to admit, if we're all being fair, uh, only appeals to the hyper, hyper hardcore players, probably less than 1% of all people that buy Pokemon Sword and Shield, not, or any Pokemon game, I'm sorry. However, that doesn't mean they don't matter. Oftentimes, your most dedicated players are the ones that are going to be the most vocal. They're the ones that buy all the swag. They're the ones that are likely, if we use the mobile gaming terminology, they're the ones that in most, most cases are your whales. Um, so for the first time ever, you will not be able to import Pokemon into the game that you've carried with you, something that you've always been able to do. Now, it seems like Game Freak has come out to say, uh, you know, this is because we've had to reuse certain animations and we've had to, um, you know, we want to make things better. So we're going for quality over quantity. But there seems to be some question on whether or not that's truly the case as a uh, YouTuber Distant Kingdom, which I just came across today. Um, I'm going to use a small clip from his video, but if you enjoy it, you should absolutely 
uh, check out his channel and subscribe to it because it's very interesting um, how quickly he seems to debunk the idea that you simply cannot uh, just convert the files from other games. The Pokemon models are easily portable. There are many examples to prove this point. The models can be found on the 3DS, on cell phones, on anyone's computer, in an arcade machine in Ga Olay, and yes, the models have already been proven to be successfully ported on the Nintendo Switch. People then begin to blame Sword and Shield as the reason why the models are rendered unusable. Allow me to introduce you to the concept known as conversion. 3D models are also convertible. I'll walk you through an example to prove my point. I have every single model, texture, and animation of every single Pokemon from Pokemon Sun and Moon ported onto my computer. I also have two different model viewing software that we will be using for this demonstration, Ohana 3DS and Spica. Let's assume that Ohana is Pokemon Let's Go, and let's treat Spica as Sword and Shield. Let's also assume that instead of those two games supporting the same type of models between them, Game Freak has, for some reason, decided they want to make the two Pokemon titles on the same console support different file types. So let's go into Let's Go and load up a Pikachu model with a file format of .bin. As you can see, it loads up Pikachu with no problem. Now let's try and load up that exact same Pikachu model into Pokemon Sword and Shield. It gives us an unsupported file format error, which means it doesn't support .bin. Does this mean we just give up because now every model is rendered unusable and we should get to work on making them from scratch again? Of course not. We can simply convert the model. Let's go back into Let's Go and convert the model by exporting it as a different file format. Let's say that Sword and Shield supports the SMD format. We'll make a new folder titled Sword and Shield so we can easily locate our converted model. Let's go back into Sword and Shield and click open. Let's look for the Sword and Shield folder where we put our converted model and... BAM! It worked. The model from Let's Go has been successfully converted, exported, and then imported into Sword and Shield. Both models are the exact same, one was just converted from the other. We didn't need to remake it from scratch because 3D models can be easily converted. Seriously, awesome work, dude. I'm going to leave a link to the original video in the description below for people to go check out your channel. Now, the Pokemon models used in Let's Go appear to be the exact same ones that are used in the 3DS games. They didn't redo them. Uh, the models used in Sword and Shield also appear to be the exact same ones as well. Even though the fans seem, uh, <laughs> the fans do not seem to believe that they've been uh, redone, and there seems to be plenty of modeling out there that would refute what the creators of Sword and Shield Game Freak say. Now, maybe they did need to recreate them. Maybe there is some reason that you can't, for example, as he shows, just re export the models. But if you can, and they're full of baloney, uh, I would understand why people are upset. Also, the animations themselves are underwhelming. Uh, you know, Game Freak had come out to say that, look, we're not going to have every Pokemon in the national decks because we're going to make the animations very cool. That seems to be very underwhelming. The overall graphics of the game seem to be extremely un underwhelming as well with uh, the, I guess, the design of trees getting memed heavily. Um, they allege that the models had to be remade from scratch, but with information like I've already presented you, it's pretty hard to believe them. Uh, if you understand, also, there happens to be a decent uh, uh, article for once on Sword and Shield or uh, on Kotaku, but as usual, you see comments, you know, like I mentioned earlier. Uh, because most gaming fans are entitled children that can't respect the creators and understand this is a business, uh, you en entitled people are the worst for gaming, and it's been horrible lately. Or you could also see, part of the problem is that they're, co they're coddled by the developers. Yeah, heaven forbid that um, providers of a product give their customers what they want. Now, I understand, as I said earlier in this video, it's not reasonable to expect uh, you know, a creator a producer of a thing, in this case a video game, to give you literally every little thing. But nah, the idea that, hey, we're cutting off some of the Pokemon from the national decks in order to give you a better overall experience, if you're going to say that, and if you're going to do that, that experience has to be top-notch, and it just doesn't appear that the experience we're seeing in Pokemon Sword and Shield would qualify and you see a rare good article from Gita Jackson talking about uh, some of why 
the uh, Pokemon series itself uh, is so beloved starting back in 1996 and what has led to uh, what appears to be you know, previously Nintendo's most disliked video that I could find on their YouTube channel um, was their Nintendo 3DS Metroid Prime uh, E3 trailer. Coming in at 10K upvotes, 93,000 downvotes. That's all the way back from 2005. Now, bringing up the second place video. Now, a lot of the Pokemon, a lot of the Nintendo Switch Online trailers are greatly disliked, but this one reaching 84,000 disliked. You can see some of the top comments. People here in Japan are angry about this also. I'm not speaking for everyone in Japan, obviously. But a lot of other Japanese people on the internet seem to be upset about Game Freak removing Pokemon. It's not just Western gamers that are concerned. This is a huge deal for two reasons. The first reason is that in Japan, we are rarely vocal about our opinions because we don't like to start conflict. If we are very passionate about something and tell people our opinion publicly, it must be very important. Pokemon is a very popular video game series in Japan, and a lot of people care about it. We want Game Freak and Nintendo to put as much effort in these games as they can to make the game the best quality it can be. And remember the famous Nintendo quote um, a, uh, about putting extra time. See, the common question is, well, if you didn't have time to put all the Pokemon in, why not just release the game in another year? I mean, Pokemon gets a new major release every one or two years the way it is. Uh, why not spend a little more time on it? Of course, the famous quote being, a delayed game is eventually good, and a rushed game is forever bad. Uh, they could have definitely added Pokemon and had no real reason to cut them. The Switch can definitely handle a thousand plus Pokemon models, which is much more powerful than the 3DS that could already handle 800 plus Pokemon. Plus, they're walking and running animations. They already had old Pokemon model from Sun and Moon to use, so they just had to update the graphics. Plus, they already had 151 Kanto models finished in Let's Go. They could have put the Sword and Shield as a priority and had the best team working on the game, but they didn't. Instead, they sidelined Pokemon in favor of a new game that had a secondary team developing Pokemon. They didn't hire enough people to work at the game and treated it like it wasn't important. The second reason this is a problem is that when they realized that they were going to have enough time to up not have enough time to update every Pokemon model to put in the game, they chose to not hire more people to do it. Instead, they came up with an unconvincing excuse so that all uh, so they wouldn't have to spend any extra time, money, or effort into developing the game. They figured they could get away with cutting content because they figured people would buy the game no matter what. What a terrible decision they make. They think saving money is more important than making a great game. And this goes on and on. Second, like here we go. Miyamoto's quote is the second highest voted. A delayed game is eventually good, but a rush game is forever bad. They are willing to tell me that a 3DS can handle 800 Pokemon, Mega Evolutions, and Z moves, but the Switch can't. Anyway, they said they removed some things to have higher quality animations, but the animations are the same as Pokemon X and Y. Good job, Game Freak. Uh, a lot of people are upset about this, and uh, this is probably on track to be Pokemon's most, I'm sorry, Nintendo's most disliked video. Now, there's more to this story than just. You know the model side or uh, the national deck side of things um obviously the national decks meaning we're not going to be able to import pokemon from other pokemon games that aren't in this particular game um also the national decks is a representation of a bigger issue that older players had with the series and in particular game freak the developer of the pokemon franchise although fans have accused game freak of laziness regarding the decision to not have the national decks and sword and shield that complaint has become a stand-in for all the complaints that pokemon fans have had for the series so we can see kotaku shilling for the developer in particular fans have latched on to a comment uh from Pokemon's composer and the series producer saying that we're focusing on character models and animations and therefore decided not to animate every character. Since then, fans have been especially judgmental of every single animation. Well, why wouldn't they be? If you're going to remove something from the game and you're telling me you're doing it in order to spend more time on something better, then yeah, I'm going to critique that thing. Um, Pokemon as a game has thrived in part because it banks on the nostalgia of people who played the first game, while also appealing to new audiences. But while Pokemon fans have grown up, gotten older, and maybe had kids of their own, the games have not necessarily grown with them. The example I used to explain this process is catching a Pokemon which has gone almost unchanged since the first game. In order to catch one, you have a little battle, lower its health, throw a Pokeball at it. So far, so good. 
in the first Pokemon game, in order to throw a Pokeball, you had to open the item. Um, in those games, in order to throw a Pokeball, you'd have to open a bag. You know, so that that sort of thing changes. Um, but then Kotaka goes on to minimize it and say, you're right, it isn't a big deal. It's just that I've been playing the game since I was seven years old, and many aspects of it have not changed at all. Yes, there are over, now over a thousand Pokemon. There are new friends and new regions to explore. That does very little to distract from the fact that the games are generally pretty much the same. While the National Dex isn't something that's important to me, I feel the kinship with those fans' frustration because I too wish the game would make some more radical changes. The amount of time it took for the similar changes to happen just aggravates that frustration. Meaning we're getting new games, they're just not improving. And there's also a quote uh, in an interview about all of this where Game Freak seems to imply that, um, you know, they basically indicated, at least the way I read the translation, is that it's unlikely that any future games, any future Pokemon games will just continue to have the uh, national decks. That they're always going to kind of go with this regional decks, uh, as they put it. And I get the argument um, that... This may just apply to cash, you know, that most people who play these games are casuals and that they don't really care about it. Well, that's not a good look as a developer to dismiss any portion of your fandom at all. The idea that you can't balance the game. I've seen quotes from them saying, well, you know, some Pokemon are overpowered and, and so we just removed them. That doesn't seem like a good fix either. Why not just balance them? Um, you know, you had all sorts of just bad, bad PR moves, which is rare for Nintendo. They finished this by saying the drama is about the tension of desire to indulge in nostalgia against the desire to experience more complexity. Try as they might, Pokemon isn't that deep and making it any more complex risks alienating new players. You can thread that needle, but it's hard, especially when the franchise in question is beloved around the world and has been for 20 years. Fans are going to continue to be mad until Game Freak figures out how to please everyone. So I'm guessing they'll be mad till the end of time. I mean, sure. Uh, I think that it's unreasonable to expect um, Pokemon to please everyone. But the national decks seems like a pretty uh, standard baked in feature of the game to be removing. And then the problem is when you remove that and then you come and say, well, uh, it's because these other things are better. And then people go look at the other things and they're not better. Or And then you say, well, actually, uh, it's because we had to remodel everything. And then you have people seemingly debunking that. It doesn't look good for you. And it burns a lot of goodwill. And that's why that video will probably be the most disliked Nintendo, <laughs> Nintendo video, maybe of all time. But it looks like we're going to have a new champion. I hope you enjoyed this video. We'll talk to you again real soon.